So what is an internet in a box? Uh, this is, and I'll let me turn it on, that would help. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this is a, um, a device uh, which is small and inexpensive. Uh, this is about $200, $250. Uh, it's a commercial device Seagate makes this. Um, we hack it up and load information on it. It provides essential internet resources without any internet connection. Uh, on this device is a local copy of almost a terabyte of the world's free information. Uh, and I'll get to uh, what that is in a minute. Um, this is a basically a Wi-Fi hard drive with a web interface on it. So any, in a minute I'll let you do this, don't do it right now. <laughs> Anyone can hop on their phone, their laptop, their tablets, uh, go on this wireless network and access all of the information um, through a, a web interface which we're trying to keep very basic and simple so it can work on things like Windows 95 or on phones and, and, and whatever devices are available. Uh, so the resources we have loaded on this right now, uh, we have Wikipedia in 40 different languages. Uh, we have worldwide maps that go, you can zoomable maps that you can zoom all the way down to street level with. Uh, we have 40,000 ebooks in many different languages. We have, uh, I like to say, most of the world's open source software on this device, including the source code, so that if you want to be a programmer, you can learn from other people. Um, we have uh, a lot of video on the device. We have about 500 hours of instructional video currently in the library. Uh, there's about there's almost 4,000 Khan Academy videos uh, on the device right now that you can browse and uh, and view. Who is this for? Uh, this is targeted for schools and communities in the developing world, places where internet access is not readily available or is too expensive. Congress has to stop that. So the devices that we're trying to develop, we're primarily doing software and data processing. Um, but what we want to package this as is we want to package it into a device that could be taken anywhere and used on, on, a, uh, on a network that exists, on a network that doesn't exist. Um, uh, so we have basically two devices we're targeting. Uh, we have the wireless device. This is completely standalone. It runs off a battery. Uh, it has um, Wi-Fi, it has a one terabyte hard drive in it. You could power this off of solar. Uh, it doesn't draw much power. You can, um, you can basically put it anywhere. It opens up its own hotspot, just like you would have at Starbucks. You can connect to it. It'll redirect any web request to itself. And, um, and then you can browse the content. And you'll all be doing that in a minute. Um, this is what we call the wired version. Um, this is meant sort of as a network appliance, so if you have a school with an existing infra infrastructure that has an Ethernet network at least that uh, maybe wires up a computer lab, um, or if you already have a wireless router, you don't really need that functionality, then this is a one terabyte device that you can just plug in with Ethernet into your network and uh, is there, is available, you send a web browser to it and all of the content is available for browsing. Um, so what? Obviously, these aren't of much use unless you have a screen to look at. Uh, so, uh, but there are a lot of screens in the world to look at apparently, and they're becoming cheaper. So I'm going to set my Wi-Fi internet box wired. It's already there. Then I go to a web browser, and I go. Well, I'm already there, but I'll just to show you. If you go to knowledge, or there's an IP address, I'll show you to go to the box. Then you get you know, Internet in the Box, the site. Um, so this is just Firefox. Uh, the site is meant to be mobile friendly. That's why things are kind of wide and uh, there's not a lot going on on the screen. Uh, and we can select from our content. So let's look at Wikipedia. Uh, we have uh, over 40, 40 languages that Wikipedia is in. Um, so we have uh, Persian, Korean, I don't even know what that is, uh, Arabic, uh, and all these are live and active. I don't speak Arabic, so I'm not going to actually look in Arabic. I'm going to go up to English. Um, even in English, there's several different varieties, several packages of Wikipedia. There's Wikipedia in simple English for English learners. Uh, there's Wikipedia for schools, which is a, a good distribution of Wikipedia. Uh, I'm just going to go with Wikipedia 0.08. Uh, most of these contain f images, but the full text Wikipedia version does not contain images, so that, that's why I'm going to the 0 .0, 0 0.08 version. Um, so we are now in Wikipedia. We can click on things and we can see things. Um, we can read Wikipedia just like we'd normally re read it, follow links. 
and we can also search it. We have full text search capability over Wikipedia. Uh, whatever Wikipedia you happen to be in is what it's searching over right now, but we will have a universal search function so you can search all the data content from all the different sources. Uh, so if we look up uh, one laptop per child maybe, uh, there we go. There's the one laptop per child article. You open it up and we have the full article text for one laptop per child. Click on the X01 laptop, etc. Um, we can go back, back and back and back to the main page. Now, um, so we have a lot of books. Uh, our books are provided by uh, Project Gutenberg. We have the complete Project Gutenberg. Uh, minus some strange format things I'll talk about in the technical presentation a little bit. So if we were to search Project Gutenberg for uh, Weathering Heights, maybe. There, Auto suggested it. Uh, Joel put this together, this interface. Um, search for Weathering Heights. There's Weathering Heights by Emily Bronte. Uh, we can click on Weathering Heights and... This is the article page. It knows the subject. We'll be able to, in the future, add browsable capabilities so that you can browse by topic, by subject, by your favorite type of novel, whether you like mysteries and things like that. Uh, we have all of that information. Uh, we just don't have it very accessible yet. Um, and we open up the Weathering Heights file, and there is Weathering Heights. Uh, a lot of the books do have images. We have mirrored uh, Gutenberg with the images. So um, anything that does have images, they will come up as well. Uh, there are multiple versions of things, uh, which actually we want to kind of reduce, but there's an HTML version, there's a text version, there's a EPUB ebook version, so you can download this to your ebook reader uh, and read it offline. Let's go back up. Uh, maps is the thing I'm maybe most proud of on this. Um, we have full worldwide maps, uh, completely zoomable. This data is from the OpenStreetMap project. Uh, I don't know. Well, maybe you'll look at Berlin. I've never been to Berlin. Assuming that is Berlin. Maybe that's not Berlin. I'm not even sure where I am. It is Berlin. Okay. Uh, for all populated places on the planet, with more than 5,000 people, we have maps down to the street level. Um, so you can actually get all the way down, even further than this, to individual buildings, uh, individual street names. Uh, it's really quite detailed. Um, and that's pretty much anywhere in the world. Uh, and where, um, where the data is in a foreign language, it will be in a foreign language. Uh, So I find this exciting. This took more work than any of the rest of it at this stage. Uh, getting these maps processed is, uh, takes many weeks of computer time. Um, I'll go into the details in the technical presentation. Uh, video, we've got uh, almost 4,000 Khan Academy videos. Uh, the Khan Academy videos are under Creative Commons uh, non-commercial license, so we can legally use them. Um, we can go into any topic like math, go into geometry, Check out right triangles, maybe. Uh, Pythagorean theorem proof sounds interesting. Maybe more technical. Oh, and it died. Disappointing. There. Now, we video. Uh, we um, support HTML5 video as well as. Uh, using either the WebM or the H.264 codec. Um, older devices are going to have problems with video uh, because, let me mute that. Uh, older devices are going to have some problems with video because it just wasn't standardized until very recently. Um, but the content is there, so you can always download it and play it in a player that you might have locally, something like that. Uh, well, we have to add something to let you do that. 
<laughs> Maybe a nice download button over here. <laughs> you can try that. Um, uh, then software. Uh, I would uh, take shout outs. We have basically a full mirror of the Ubuntu repositories. Uh, all of the main Ubuntu repositories are on here along with the source code. So if you wanted to look at, I don't know, how um, Emacs is built, you can go to e, Emacs, and uh, there's the sources right there. Uh, so you can download that. You can also install Ubuntu on a local machine and use this as your software repository. So you can actually download, down, you can, so you can install on local lab computers and all those computers can then pull from this repository. Uh, in OLPC, you could have a sugar repo on here perhaps. Um, uh, so it's, it's a, a nice data set and it's nice that it gives everybody access to the source code. So how do I make something happen here? Right? So These are, pick a browser and like that. That. Oh, yeah. How does it, How do I tell it to connect to our Wi-Fi? You're going to be able to detect stuff. stuff. I think I've heard about this. They have videos in there, uh -huh. and lessons on how to read and write, and a little bit of basic On the phone itself. On the phone itself. Oh, yeah. Don't on it. Now, with that... Yeah, we can take our content and push it onto anything. 